pardon, be in nature. I trust your wealth. I certainly am. Today, I'm potting around the garden and having a look at things that need changing around. I'm moving some old tree stumps that I had cut from a tree that unfortunately um, needed to be taken down because it had disease on one side. So what you can see is having sat in the garden for over a year now. It's beginning to naturally decay, as one would expect. What you're looking at here, those white streaks or the white lighter patches, um, are mycelium. Mycelium is a natural, healthy bacteria that lives in plant life. And um, it's certainly welcome in my garden. It occurs naturally, often in old leaves and wood, trees, but in nature what happens as the wood and the leaves and the trunks of an old tree, as in this case, start to break down, they form this thing called mycelium. You can see here some fungus is growing. And these are really good healthy signs for any garden. It's the natural decaying process. Underneath the immediate bark of the tree is all this stuff here. I mean, it looks very paper-like actually. It's great. There must be millions, billions of microscopic life force in here. Yep, they're also welcome in my garden few widgery grubs and things but as I peel it down gently you'll see some worms baby worms I mean this is all biodegradable so at some point it will just break down completely I'm not going to get rid of any of this stuff the trunks I'm going to move to another section of the garden bark I'm using as mulch around many of the plants and the bit in between I will also use as mulch so none of it will go to waste. Heavy logs. <laughs> you can see there really where the decay was happening in the tree and it was um, at risk of just falling unannounced and so that's the reason why this particular tree had to be cut down. It was leaning too much. It was really balancing in a precarious way. And so the safest option, unfortunately, was to take it down. But I will use all the bits of this tree.
there's that mycelium again as the wood starts to rot down and become decayed and the starting process of the bacteria that's healthy for the soil. Can you see that love heart in the middle of that trunk? Isn't that awesome? I think it's just not a coincidence but there's a hollow heart in the middle of the trunk of wood. So I'm stacking them at the back of the garden for now um, but I will find a purpose for them at some point. Great exercise if nothing else. Remember when you're pushing, you're working your front muscles, your pectorals, pectoralis major. You're also working the back of your arms, your triceps. So this is great natural exercise anyway. And as you pull, you're working your back and biceps. So this is an all over body workout. So you can see here to the left of the log as you have a look at it where the bark is damaged and the tree was beginning to um, decay and um, we did call a tree surgeon out and it was um, advisable to have the tree cut down because um, it was beginning to lean and uh, you can't imagine what kind of damage potentially that could have done if it had come down unannounced. So the bark has been stripped off this particular one and you just see lots of signs of life really that's what this is. It's beautiful stuff. So here the bark just peels off quite easily. It's been out in and weathered now for about just over a year. There's some mycorrhizal fungi. Um, you can purchase those at many nurseries and you add that to the plant's root system and that's what the mycelium does and the mycorrhizal fungi it sort of um, multiplies the roots of the plant therefore establishing a larger root system which in turn allows the plant to um, utilize more nutrients from the soil take up more water so it's a win-win and that's what this stuff is for. It really does help to create a larger network of roots for the plant. So I'm really happy to see this in the garden. I know it exists, because um, I do see it, you know, occasionally when I'm moving plants around, but it's nice just to see this in this uh, wood. And um, I think some people might panic if they were to see this white mass <laughs> of um, fungus looking material but really it's a sign of good healthy soil so I'm happy about that. And these are heavy. <laughs> So remember when you push, you're working your chest or pectorals and your triceps. So free workout here for me. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Easy does it.
some smaller pieces now, a little bit easier to manage, but still heavy nonetheless. bark is peeling off really quite easy and look at that incredible it's just so beautiful it's beautiful to see all these worms and the baby worms and life all sorts living here and that's why it's a really good idea if you can perhaps somewhere in your garden to leave a place where you do leave logs and twigs and straw and hay and bark just to allow natural habitat for those who will break down and keep creating compost for you. The more compost you have, the better, right? So none of this stuff will be thrown away. I'm going to use every last piece of it. I could have left it on the log, yes. But um, as I'm going to be rolling it, I didn't want to harm them directly by rolling the log and causing their death. So that's the reason why I, well, m m most of the bark peeled off so easily. And many of it, most much of it, fell off without even my own, m with my without my intervention. And so that's the reason why I removed it, just to um, be sure not to cause them any harm. Here again in this trunk, you can see where the damage was or the disease that was affecting the tree. Is composted right down already and I'll add that on top of um, some of my fruits boxes so where I'm planting fruits and vegetables I'll just put that on top um, a nice layer of mulch on top of those It's incredible. You know, when you think about nature, um, I mean, it's all of the above, right? It just keeps providing. I mean, for me, nature is the true definition of abundance. You've got the tree, and the tree, in many instances, is used to make homes. It can be used to create fuel, fire. Um, it breaks down naturally and becomes soil where you can plant food. A single seed grows into a plant. The plant has many fruits often. The fruit gives you seeds and you just keep on that cycle. It's incredible. It really is abundance when I look at things like this. It creates habitat. Food. <laughs> ready-made compost add it on top of the soil around the flower garden our vegetables and we're good to go
looks almost paper-like. You know when you see the stories of the Egyptians and they've got that is it papyrus, the paper that they use, it looks very much paper-like. You can almost begin to visualise how paper is made from trees. I'm not sure what these are, but they're living in between the trunk and the bark of the tree. So what am I going to do with this pile of tree bark? I'm going to use it to mulch some of my fruit trees mostly. At this time of year, we're in the middle of winter, um, the soil can get very cold here in the UK so I'll be using that as a mulch to keep the soil from freezing in certain areas. Um, it will also provide a little habitat as well for beneficial insects and others that need places to hide, you know, out of the elements for the winter. It will help to keep the area free of weeds or should I say really wild flowers because weeds are really wild flowers that are just grown in areas that you may not want them to so it will help to suppress any wild flowers from growing immediately around the tree area and sometimes they can deprive the trees of you know uh, moisture and nutrients so I can suppress those which will help the fruit trees to get as much nutrients as required. It also helps to keep the soil cool actually in the hotter seasons. So it's win-win as always. Keeps it warm in the winter, keeps it cool in the hotter season. So this one's a young apple tree. And this bark is just perfect. Just adding a few layers on top of each other around the base of the tree. 
or keep moisture in and I almost act like um, a sponge to allow the water or the rainwater to um, be seeped into the soil as and when it's needed as I said it acts as um, a suppressant for unwanted plants at this time of year it's really very cold and temperatures have dropped to freezing here in the UK and so it prevents the soil from freezing over gradually over time it will break down and become new compost and release the nutrients into the soil I've got some other plants around here I think I've got um, there's a sedum sedum spectabil and I'm just putting this around that as well as a peony so just provided some ground cover mulching it which is a good practice if you can um, of course you can go and buy some you know natural items to use as mulching you can use old newspaper you can use cardboard um, you can use shredded leaves or leaves as a whole anything that's biodegradable really the tree to the left is a peach tree and yes it does flower here in the UK and it also does fruit and I get some peaches from here it's still rather young you can see just from the size of the, um, the thickness of the trunk so I'm really hoping over the years you know in the years to come that it will be able to fruit and give me even more and more so that there is the peach tree what you didn't see me do was just dig up a plant actually that I wanted to move and um, here you go here's a perfect example of the mycelium in the root system of this tree that I just dug up and have repotted but this is exactly what I was talking about sometimes you get the privilege of seeing at the base of the roots or in different areas of the root system this white fungus looking thing and this is the mycelium and it's great for plants if you see it it's a good sign um, it just means that the plant has got some extra army of rooting so it's a good sign absolutely so that was just a plant that I had in a space I didn't want it to be and I'm just repotting it so I'm just going to heal it in with some soil and um, decide where to put that perhaps come spring or I may gift it to somebody if anyone's looking for um this one is laurel laurel and um, as if to confirm you can see on the right hand side there's a piece of tree but uh, the trunk there and you can see the mycelium on that bark so it's a symbiotic relationship really and um, it's a good thing
and this actually was growing from a cutting so all I did was when I pruned down or when I pruned back the laurel I just took a, a piece of twig literally maybe about eight to twelve inches long and stuck it in the ground and hey presto you get a new plant so for free and again coming back to the abundance it's absolutely true for me in the garden you see the evidence of it all the time this was just a simple cutting and um, stuck it in the ground and I think it's probably about a year and a half later I now have essentially a whole new plant and it hasn't cost anything water it in So back to my peach plants. All beneath this soil, there's lots of mycelium, just covering it up with the tree barks. Keep that from freezing over the winter, though it wouldn't harm this tree in any way, shape or form. It's managed many a cold winter here in the UK and still goes on to produce some lovely fruits. This plant here is actually um, peonies and um, I'm just doing the same thing here, just using some of the bark to protect around what would be the root sort of system. Mulch in the area. And the same with my young apple tree.
has a cherry tree still very young but it does produce cherries already and they're delicious So I have this fig tree and fig trees can get to be quite large and I'm in two minds as to whether to put it in a pot. This will be where the fruit grows. I pruned it back hard last year. Behind you can actually see the um, almond tree. Yep, almonds here in the UK, and it's already swelling. The buds are already swelling, and it does produce almonds. Except the squirrels tend to get there before me, but yeah, I get plenty of almonds off this tree. So back to the fig tree. I've decided I'm going to dig this up and put it into a pot, a plant pot. <sighs> yeah, to control its growth. It's really getting a little larger than I wanted in, for this space. And I have a project that I'm going to be working on in this area and I really I'm reluctant to do it, but I don't want this fig tree to get too overgrown for this particular area. So here goes. I'm simply going to dig it up and put it into this large container.
it's only about two years old or you know I've had it for about two years and it really has um, put on a lot of growth and it's been cut back and it does produce lots of figs Initially, I was going to have it espaliate, so, you know, control the limbs, the direction of this tree, but I've decided to let it have its freedom, if you like, and it's just going to grow in whatever direction it wants to grow. And they do get really very large, so I want to just try and um, manage the growth of this particular tree. I remember purchasing it about two years ago, and it came in a root ball so not bare root it came with some hessian it came in a ball of hessian sack and you don't have to take the hessian off the root ball area it simply grows through it if you're wanting to have fruit trees and you're not too sure about planting them directly into the garden do consider putting them in pots different fruit trees can come in different um, sizes and they also come in different root sizes so you can get the miniature plants as well the ones that will be limited by growth and yeah if you've got a smaller garden do still consider fruit trees but maybe put them into a pot i could really have trimmed that root back a little bit but um decided against it much better. Okay, so it's nicely in the pot and I'm going to prune it back quite hard actually. And what I'm going to do with those cuttings? Well, yeah, I'm just going to put them into some soil and grow some more fig trees. That simple. So here are the cuttings, mm, they're about 8 to 12 inches long. I've got a pot of soil, compost. Remember which way round, which way is up and which is down from the cuttings though. And then simply stick them in the soil. That easy, couldn't be easier. Each of those will soon root and each of them will give you a free plant gift them to friends that's the whole idea be in the garden be in nature full of abundance incredible
So this is an area that I just created on a piece of, um, what do they call that? Anyway, piece of free wood. You know, you get something delivered to you, large amounts, and you get the free pieces of wood. Um, I've just put those down, filled up some gardening pots with some homemade compost, and taken some cuttings from different plants around the garden. Um, you can still see there the laurel that I planted earlier on. I've got some anemone, September charm, and any other softwood or hardwood cuttings. I just cut pieces and throw them into the pots and if they take, fantastic. And if they don't, it's not a problem. They just go back into the compost. But there you have it. That's what I got up to in the garden. Despite the cold.